Good morning. It's a good day for spraying. It's very dry out today in Ohio, and that's what I call a good spray day. And we're going to do some touch-up work after I show you what I'm going to use, and it's lacquer. This jar is lacquer thinner. It's always sitting around the shop ready to go. This will be clear lacquer, right out of the can straight. And this is called a flash coat. It's going to have four parts of thinner, one part lacquer, and then a certain amount, small amount of retarder thinner that slows the drying time down and gives it a smooth coat. What I'm showing you here is called a flash coat. That's something that I learned at the Gibson factory back in the 60s where I visited often. A flash coat is four parts thinner and one part lacquer, so that's not much of a build. Gibson used it after their final sanding of their final spray coat to smooth out the finish and make it shine and glossy before the buffer. Here, I'm using it in repair work, so for me the flash coat is to soften the finish so I can go back on it with new lacquer and it will melt in. And then I'll go back over that with another flash coat to melt it in on the edges. So what I do is spray flash coat, lacquer, flash coat, let it sit four hours, flash coat, lacquer, flash coat, let it sit four hours, and I will sand in between when I think I need to with nothing less than 800 grit just to knock off the dust. To keep things clean, I like to just use a Dixie cup to load my lacquer. Then I don't get it mess up the top every time I try to pour it out. Now I'm gonna make a flash coat with four parts thinner. one part lacquer, and it doesn't have to be exact. That just adds body to it, otherwise you'd be spraying straight thinner. And because we have a dry day today, but rain's coming, it can get humid in a hurry, I'll use a little bit of retarder thinner. That'll slow down the drying time and give it a really nice smooth coat. I'll be using my magic potions on this 1949 Gibson L48 guitar. It's a nice old guitar, but someone botched a plugging job on the top. They had electronic pickups in this at one point and knobs and stuff. There were a lot of holes left over, and the fellow that fixed it had trouble, and I'm bailing him out. This is how the guitar looked when my friend sent it back after he tried to fix it. He put plugs in that I sent to him in the mail, but got him in sideways and the color that he was using was way too strong. He used more than he should. I made new plugs out of mahogany and they're slightly larger because I had to ream out the old holes and plug them with new ones. I used amber super glue as a sealer because it gave me something to spray over and it also sort of yellowed the wood at the same time. Then I made a stencil punching out holes that would fit right over my plugs so I'd be able to airbrush color on them but not spray dark on the surrounding area, which would then look too dark. Then I airbrushed the area with a colored shader that I made of lacquer, medium brown color tone stain, black color tone stain, and a little bit of black color tone lacquer soluble pigment to opaque it a little bit. After a few coats, I take that mixture, which is a blackish brown, and I added a little bit of red to it. It falls out of its own accord. That's a lot right there. That's the blending with a little bit of red that's in this guitar. I've got a good buildup of clear here, but I'm not done. All I'm doing now is knocking down the dust. I don't want to get into color and any little lint that got on there and, and little dust specks. This isn't a full level sanding, just a dust sanding. The little scratches that you may see will be gone into the next coat, which will take place in my spray booth right over here. So when I say spray booth, it's because this is what I'm using these days. I only do touch-ups. I have friends with real booths, and if I want to use that, I can. I'm not big on spraying anymore because uh, I've done my share of it. I'm going to set the guitar here on the stand in my belt sander, and this is a slow-moving exhaust. 18 inches with a totally enclosed motor. And if I open the window 
on the other side of the shop on a nice day like this gets plenty of draw and I spray it into the furnace filter here. And I'll just be shooting out like this. I'll set the guitar like this for some of the spraying, maybe. That's if I want to shoot off the edge out the fan. But I always leave it set in level like this after I spray so that it flows out smoothly and don't get runs. What I've used lately are these gravity feed spray guns that I love. These are touch-up guns and they're new to me. All my life I've used siphon feed cans that are hard to clean and messy. These are awesome. You can put your stuff in it. When you're done, you can open it up, pour it back into the jar and put thinner in it. You could get by with one gun. I'm using three. But for today's shoot, I'm going to use pre-valves. You may not have it a compressor or a spray gun. And this does a great job. I'm not kidding. I've used these since the 1960s. For a small job, it's the way to go. So just like the spray guns, these jars are loaded with lacquer, flash coat 4 to 1, and some thinner to clean the tips. What I'll do is start out with 4 to 1 and spray that area to soften it. Quickly follow with clear lacquer, not too much, and go right back on it with 4 to 1 around the edges to help melt it in. There you have it. By alternating the flash coats and the lacquer coat, I've gotten a great touch-up here with no runs or sags. It blended in nicely. I'll let it hang for a week or so and then buff it out, and it's going to look great.